Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you the second installment of the uh, Legion playlist. So we did a Son of Horus already, now we're going to the second video and we're going to go for Imperial Fists. Seems how these two uh, Legions seem to be the poster boys for the new upcoming release of the second edition of Horus Heresy. Um, I thought it'd be great to start with both of those. Yellow is a notoriously tricky color to paint. Um, and I have tried my best over many years to try and get a really nice consistent Imperial Fist scheme and I've failed many times. Hopefully in this video I can show you guys how I go about doing it these days um, to help you guys achieve that Legion colour yourself. So stick around to the end of the video and enjoy. Okay, starting the Imperial Fist Legion Air. We went for the traditional Chaos Black Spray with the all over uh, Zenithal of um, Great Seer. This left us with this miniature here. From here we moved on to contrast I and in yellow. This is just to get the first feel of the yellow armor. It's by no means going to give you a, a clean yellow coat to uh, to leave like that. We'll be doing a lot of work after the fact to uh, make this yellow something an imperial fist would be proud of. But this is a great way to start it off. So all over contrast um, I and in yellow uh, making sure it doesn't pull in any of the cracks or crevices. I like to work one appendage at a time, so right leg, left leg, torso, arm, head kind of thing, so that the contrast doesn't have a chance to dry um, as you're working around a piece, and then cause any of those kind of uh, wave lines touching each other. I do enjoy working um, with Mark III armor and contrast. It suits it very well with all those uh, ridges along the back of the legs and stuff like that. It sits really well on top of it. Here it is after it's dried. Like I said, just gets the feel of the yellow armor. We're then going to go into the Black Templar contrast. We're going to apply a nice base coat onto his shoulder pads. Sorry, the trim of his shoulder pads. Uh, the casing of the gun. And he's got a little, um, almost like a little pretty tiara bit on the front of his helmet above the grill and that in the artwork that I've found so far was uh, the same color as the shoulder trim so it was that black color so I went ahead and followed um, the art piece as close as I could to what I think the Imperial Fist will look like this stage you need to be just a little bit more careful than with the yellow you don't want the Black Templar on the yellow parts like I said before, we are going to be layering on top of this later on. So if you do make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. But it will kind of shift the tone of the yellow you put on top of it if it's going over a black part. So it's better to just be as careful as possible. Next, jump over to Lead Belcher. And this is just for the metallic parts of the gun. Some of the piping that goes along uh, from the backpack. And that's about it. Well, the most interesting things about painting up these legion miniatures and um, for this playlist is remembering that legion miniatures are generally quite bland they they don't carry the same kind of iconography or battle honors or badges or um, bits and pieces like that that the 40k equivalent space marines do these were mass produced rank and file soldiers so I'm trying to keep them as plain as possible but still look pretty cool so with these done, that will basically be, uh, in my head, the base coats thrown on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just serve from sepia the entire miniature. This is going to lock in all those contrasts, act like a protective layer. And it's going to add a little bit of warmth into that yellow. And like I said earlier, it does suit and sit on the Mark III armor rather well. This technique is... Uh it's going to be super helpful if you need to paint up a lot of these guys and you do not wish to use an airbrush while the shade on this miniature is drying i'm going to also base the miniature to get that out of the way so that we work up from there um, we can get the model finished in the second half of the painting okay guys while we wait for the uh, shade to dry we're going to get the miniature based up but at this point in the video, I usually like to take a quick break and thank you guys for the continued support on the channel. Thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, and of course, for subscribing. If you don't do all of those things already, 
please can you start doing all of those things making sure you're liking the videos if you're enjoying them if you have any questions drop comments below and i will get back to each and every one of you and if you are not subscribed to the mediocre hobbies channel just yet think about joining us on this crazy wacky journey thank you guys so much for watching and let's get back to that imperial fist okay and after the shade is dried and a miniature is based this is what you are left with an imperial fist miniature that's not looking too bad but it's time to brighten up that yellow so for this tutorial i argued with myself back and forth as to um, what to do here because in my all my other tutorials i tend to stick with one paint range at a time i don't like mixing and matching causing you guys to have to go out and buy a bunch of different paints from a bunch of different ranges but unfortunately in this particular instance i just had to break my rule i've had very little success with the games workshop yellow paints i usually end up just getting frustrated and um, and then annoyed and then I usually stop painting. So I actually used two different colors from two different companies um, to help me out with this yellow project. So the first one is the warm yellow from Hataka Hobbies. Um, I got sent a, a copy of their new acrylic miniature painting range um, about a week ago now. I haven't had a chance to explore them in depth yet, but they seem to be pretty high quality paints, high in pigment, which means that they get to give you a really nice coat um, with very little effort. They're also quite thinned down, so you're not going to get any chalkiness or anything like that. So I decided to test the Hataka, the Hataka yellow, uh, warm yellow on this Imperial Fist. And I was very pleasantly surprised. You don't need specifically to get the Hataka Hobbies yellow. I just honestly can't recommend the, the Games Workshop yellows. Personally, I've never been able to make them work. So if you have any heavy bodied or uh, strong pigmented yellows that you'd like to use instead, you can of course do that. So this is the first coat of the Hataki, Hataka Hobbies Yellow. I'm going to have to learn how to say that properly. And then we're going to go back and do a quick second coat. And as you can see, the second coat goes on super smooth, super vibrant. And the model is starting to look something more like an Imperial Fist Legion Air. I will be doing a review slash feature video on the attack of paints um later on in the month so if you're curious about that make sure you subscribe follow along so i can uh, show you guys what these crazy new paints are all about and this is the thing with them because they are high pigmented but still quite thin i don't mind doing multiple layers because there, there isn't any like texture left over from the previous layer as you're trying to get smooth coats it just flows nice and smooth off the brush every time and genuinely it was quite enjoyable to paint with not gonna lie to you though this will take some time some of my tutorials I call speed paints. I don't know whether I would call this one a speed paint. You do have to go in and be quite meticulous um, with the yellow armor. But that's the price you're going to have to pay if you want to have an Imperial Fist Legion on the table and you are um, you do not have an airbrush in your arsenal. You can still get beautiful army, but it will take a little bit more time. Yellow is not a very forgiving color. <laughs> And this is it with the second coat of Hataka Yellow done. As you can see, it is quite bright, but looking just a touch flat. So this is where that second paint from the other company comes in. So we're gonna use the Green Stuff World Intensity Ink. And we're gonna go for the yellow one, of course. And we're just gonna give the yellow armor a coat of this, which will then kind of add a bit of warmth back into it. A little bit of a sheen um, and kind of acts like a, almost like a correction if you have gone over a little bit with this, that or the other. Um, this kind of helps, I don't know what the right way to say that is, but, uh, it definitely helps to just tidy everything up, tie it all together. And, uh, I'm quite pleased with the result you get from applying the intensity inks. It looks more like, um, an armor piece this way, like there's metallic underneath it or whatever, a shiny manufactured thing, as opposed to a yellow color you would see on like a flag or something. Do you know what I mean? And this is it after the intensity ink has dried. Now for me, it's time to add in all of the detail work, which I'm going to use um, 
transfers and weathering to do that in a minute but let's layer up the other parts of this miniature really quickly so going back to the lead belcher to touch up those metallic parts try and leave that sepia in all the deep recesses but definitely wanting to brighten back up the metallic parts these legionnaires do know how to take care of their weapons and they would be in pristine condition even in the midst of a war and campaign i also used this time to uh, fill in his his eyes with silver as well as i'm going to be going over them with a contrast in a minute um, and this axe is a great base coat for that we're then going to go over to corvus black to paint the casing of the bolt gun just to layer it up a little bit and of course the the trim on the miniature as well I'm really, really enjoying uh, layering up the base coat black paints and using the Corvus black to do that. The touch of grey in it really adds something. It doesn't just sit on the miniature like a flat colour. So it's something I've started to do recently and I, it's something I can see myself continuing to do um, for the foreseeable future. Coming in now with that contrast I was telling you about for the eye lenses. So quick Blood Angels red contrast. And all you want to do is paint in those eye lenses because we've put the bright silver on it's going to show up as a really nice uh eye lens i've now added on the transfers if you guys are curious as to how i apply transfers onto this miniature i'll put a link at the top of the screen now that will take you to one of my previous videos where i show you guys how to put uh, transfers on space marines Next, we're going on to the weathering. So I've got a weathering stick here from Green Stuff World. Um, it's basically just that whole sponge technique I've showed you in previous videos. Um, you basically take a piece of old sponge or um, old case foam, tear it up at irregular uh, edges so it's got a really rough edge, dip it into some black paint, and then uh, wipe off the majority of it. Then you slowly start to stipple the miniature and it will start to put chips onto the armor. The weathering stick does exactly the same thing. It's just a little bit more convenient because it's it's in a nice uh, handle you can pull it out and tear a little bit extra off it's cheapest chips from green stuff world so i bought this on a whim on their website um i got it knows a few years ago now i decided i might as well give it a try and it was a much more comfortable way of doing it so you basically keep doing this until you're happy with the level of chipping on the model the miniature and then after that i like to go over to a bright silver and do the same thing again but just going lighter again and my rule of thumb for this is you start with very little on the sponge and you just keep dabbing until you're happy. Be very careful not to just overload the sponge and then press a big blob of paint onto the miniature, something that you're not gonna be happy with and it's gonna be super hard to remove or repair, especially on an Imperial Fist miniature. And when it's done, this is what you're left with. And I am delighted with this final result. I feel like this is an Imperial Fist model that's been fighting throughout the entire Horus Heresy. He's now standing on the walls of Terra, campaign badges, pristine on his armor, but the rest of his armor is battered and chipped. And he's holding back the Hordes of Chaos, shoulder to shoulder with his loyalist brothers. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys are excited for the rest of the Legion playlist. Let me know, know in the comments below what you thought about me adding those two extra paints in. Does that bother you guys? Does that frustrate you to get to that point in the video and think, oh, now I've got to go somewhere and get this weird paint or whatever? Um, or did you find it uh, helpful and useful? I would love to know what your opinions on it is, guys. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys in the next video.